good morning. Um, I woke up a little bit before Brian this morning and I actually edited a vlog. Um, so that was fun and I got that uploading. Already did the channel and now I'm just, I did our garden walk and I've already started weeding. I'm weeding the squash this morning and I went ahead and planted our sugar pumpkin. And I think the name of the game today is it's lovely out. And so I think I'm just going to weed everything. I'll try to get the kids out here when they wake up. Um, and they're pretty good about weeding, but like I'm the more thorough weeder for sure. Um, some things in the main garden have been a little neglected that normally would have been done, such as mulching. So I'm gonna mulch. And I really think that's what's happened to these cucumbers. Um, this leaf wilting, we took one out yesterday that was here and you know we did have some that had had like an early frost bite on them that we pruned hard and I thought I had saved them and I planted them right here I don't know if they're just weaker plants or what but if it's viral we've had so much rain and it, the rain splatters the soil and then gets on the other leaves and it can infect the subsequent plants. So we took out the really bad one. I'm kind of thinking we might have to take this one out, but he looks he looks better this morning and he's got some new growth on him. So I think if I mulch really well and then give them a good feed with some compost, I think, I think we might be okay. So that's my mission. And then once that's done, I think I can address um, some pruning issues and some structure issues. But I'll just sort of keep keep you guys posted throughout the day. That's my day today. Gonna be a good day to garden. So I've finished weeding um, the squash here. Um, you know, still a few weeds, but mostly done. I'll kind of pluck those as I mulch. But when we got home from camping two days ago, two evenings ago, really, we got home at like, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Um, I came out to the garden just to check on things looked down at the cabbage and these two right here i mean they were visible you know worms and holes and then on this one you could see where you know something had laid a bunch of eggs so i basically treated it like you know toxic waste and, and immediately removed them and then went and like threw them <laughs> way back into the forest um you know you can't leave that anywhere near i couldn't compost it the only thing really to do would have been to like put it in a wheelbarrow and burn it or take it very far away. Um, and the birds and animals and stuff will eat, will eat all of that. But um, I was hopeful I got it all, but now I'm seeing, you know, visible signs right here that, that we might not have gotten everybody. And I know it was funny because in the the garden update right before we left we were marveling at our cabbage because this is the most successful year we've had for cabbage usually they get eaten by slugs by now so i am going to credit you know our jagged wood chips um it makes it difficult for for slugs and things to comfortably climb up but we didn't mulch you know we haven't mulched so not only are we getting more weeds but we're getting more pests so today we need to do that and then I think I'm gonna actually I'm gonna harvest him. He's done and we'll eat that for dinner. I don't know what I'll do with it yet, but I will think about that all day. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll take a closer look at him and we'll see. This one's got some bites on it. What? Oh, those are eggs. See that? Those are eggs. So he's gonna, he's gonna go. I'll, I'll probably feed this to the chickens. They'll think that's a really yummy treat. All right, we're taking the uh, problematic cabbage and I'm gonna, oh, look at them. They're like, is that for us? Why, yes it is. All right, here we go, chickies. Ooh, there it is like, what is that? I will eat that. Hi. What do you think, Luna? It's 
Spirit and Feisty are always the first ones to check it out. They're the leaders. And then Luna. <laughs> yeah, yum yum. So I'm just weeding while the ground is nice and cool and it's really easy to get all the roots that way. Hard to do it with the camera, <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys. There we go. So, uh, so yeah, we'll just go through. I started there. Brian's uh, all the way over there on blueberries. Then we'll meet in the middle here at tomatoes. Um, and then we do need to go to the store and get some twine. These tomatoes really should have been pruned up about a week ago. It's just that was when all the plumbing happened. <laughs> So what's happening now is they're bushing out and that's not ideal for the airflow and they are more prone to disease. So what we we'll do once everything dries off is I'll start taking off some of the bottom stems uh, right here and then we'll stop there for today because I don't want to go shocking them. You know, the plants do need foliage for photosynthesis, so I don't want to go lopping off too much at once and then um, we'll get more string and give them more support and structure across and down and then later in the week i'll prune them again to try to get them into more of what you want you know that single stem well supported plant where all the leaves can get some sunlight and dry off and uh you know so that the plant puts more energy into fruiting as opposed to leafing so um but first we need to go to the hardware store for a string and then um, I believe we also have some special order plants to pick up for the front of the house as well. All right, everybody. Looks like I just came into the kitchen and we have a bird in the house. Birdie? Yeah. Bird flew right in the house. Now it's just chilling out on our couch. We leave the uh, screen door open sometimes, cracked. Cats and people come in and out. It's nice to hear the birds and stuff. But they usually don't fly in the crack. All right, so Brian and I are on the way to the hardware store. We are going to get some plants we ordered for the front yard and then more of the string so we can tie up those tomatoes and I don't know. Yep. <laughs> totally exciting. Success? That will do it. Okay. Hi everybody. So we're back from the hardware store. We just had some lunch. Brian had to leave to go teach um, a Zoom class at the shop where he needs a 3D printer. And um, I have a lot of gardening to do, but I also have a lot of cleaning to do because Getting back from camping, I don't know if you realize this, this is a very messy ordeal. Um, and I have to bake a wedding cake. It's just sheet cakes. Um, I'm not doing the cutting cake. I'm just a favor for one of my best friends. I'm making two sheet cakes, but I still want to make them look pretty. And they still need to be like hygienic and sanitary and delicious. So I need to like clean. And I just thought I would I would share with you that I'm going to like jam to my audiobook. This is my favorite way to clean. Turn my audiobook on, crank it up clean a bunch and then hopefully I'll circle to the garden this afternoon but you can see oh buddy there's a lot <laughs> okay I finished cleaning the kitchen I call it puttering when I do this with like my audiobook and I just sort of take my time and enjoy it and it's one of my favorite things to do it's so relaxing kitchen is all clean I still have my book I think I'm just gonna like listen to it while I prune
Okay, um, so I've pruned pretty much all of the bottom foliage out um, just so that one, pests have a harder time getting up to the tomato and two, it kind of gives some air movement and circulation around the bottom. I think I could prune more, but because they've just never been pruned, I really, I, I pruned them pretty hard. I'm gonna give them a break and then I'll prune them a little bit more um, bit by bit. What the problem is now, and I'll let you see, is um, a lot of them are leaning. So like here, like this, this one really needed more support. And I mean, some of this is not a lack of support. Some of this was a windstorm we had really early, but Brian will come out here and we'll get them all standing and growing upright. So yeah, I think that's a really good, good crack. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to pick up my mess and compost it. And then um, I still really need to figure out what's going on with these cucumbers. Um, just from this morning, you can see that's just completely, completely wilted right there. My money is on some sort of fungal disease, similar to what happened with our, our bell peppers up there. But luckily, you know, we had enough cucumber, enough bell peppers that had just pulled out the diseased ones um, and then replanted, and those are doing just fine. But I, I really only have one more cucumber that I could replace. <laughs> but like, I really could, you know, pick this one and this one over here, and like, there's a couple of nice big ones. So, I mean, we will have some, I, I, I'd like to pickle more, obviously, and then I'll just have some for eating, but, oh, buddy, sometimes things just do not go your way in the garden. <sighs> I'm going to get Brian's opinion, but I think we should pull that, that cucumber, and then I would water and feed and mulch everybody else and see. Hey everybody, um, it's been a few days since I last pruned these tomatoes. And so I wanted to show you, they're doing so much better. Brian was able to get in and trellis them up a little bit. And I wanted to do, I think a more thorough explanation of the pruning process now that I have them just more under control. They're, it's gonna be easier to explain because before they were just going everywhere. Um, so I'll show you here. Okay, so all of this, you know, these, these are all of our tomatoes right here um we you know we have more in the greenhouse but these are the ones that i've got in the garden and if i kind of go here into the middle excuse me onions i think this guy is just a really good example so i came out here you know last i don't remember the day last thursday um you know so a little under a week ago and just pruned out the really heavy thick branches focusing mainly on getting a nice solid bottom main stem that's like at least a foot off the ground trying to get foliage up off the ground and focusing really on um, airflow around all of the branches and now that I can kind of see what I'm doing I can come back in and I find branches that um, you know if not for airflow that I just don't even need right so a tomato um, an indeterminate tomato, that's an important point, which these are, um, produce, they want a vine. So the difference there between determinate and indeterminate is a determinate is almost like a June bearing strawberry, right? It has, it grows to a certain point, it produces all of its fruit at once, and then it's done. Um, most of your garden tomatoes are indeterminate because most gardeners want tomatoes as long as possible, right? So these are definitely indeterminate, which means that they don't bush out as much. They still get very bushy, <laughs> but they don't, they also don't have a set sort of height that they stop growing at. They will just keep growing and growing and growing, um, which it can then be like, they'll still flower once they reach a certain height. And obviously when it warms up and um, they are getting a lot of sun but to really tell them that they need to start flowering and fruiting it's good to prune um, because they'll just keep putting a lot of energy into vining out on these branches that we call suckers and i'll show you what that looks like 
So this is the main stem of the tomato plant, and here's a junction. If I follow this one up, there is a flower. If I follow this one down, there is no flower. So this branch is the sucker branch. The sucker always occurs um, with a um, flowering branch at junctions on the main stem. So that's what you want to look for. Okay, so obviously you can see if I look right here, So if I look down, you know, main stem, I've got a junction like here, we've got flower and sucker, right? This stem up here, junction right here, flower, sucker. And I'm gonna work down and really clear that base out. Probably leave the top intact. Um, this one actually I think got pruned a little too hard right now. I would have liked a little bit more foliage right there for him. So I'm really clearing out this base. Um, earlier my goal was a foot. Now I'm kind of thinking like a foot and a half. Um, Cause they're really, they're starting to get tall now. These are about four feet tall. They will get, you know, all the way up to here hopefully, <laughs> if we keep pruning them and keep them healthy. Um, they do need to be fed some compost at this stage. Um, we're gonna clear, like this one especially. See how he's lying on the floor? We don't want that. And here I'll even show you. See down here, these this yellowing mottledness. He's lying on the floor He's not getting good airflow or access to sunlight. Okay, so I'm halfway done. I did um, like a one square, like one half of this bed because it's divided right here in the middle. And I just wanted to show you guys the difference um, between the pruned side and the non-pruned side. Here is the non-pruned side. You know, it's just hard to see what's going on. And then here is the pruned side. You know, everybody, I can see one, two, three nice wide base areas. And then there's more room in the center. And I think especially if I can get, you know, Brian to come out here and let's address maybe some of this lean that they're having. I think they need some cross support is what they do. They need cross support. And then I think we could hang some supports down from here as well and that would really sort of lock them into like their own little square but here if I put the camera down pruned not pruned right there's just a big difference there um, so I'm just gonna keep cracking on this you can see here I'll show you the piles I have you know there's a pile there's a pile and there's a pile, right? So quite a few suckers to come off, but as you can see, there's still plenty of foliage. So there, there's, there's still gonna be nice healthy plants that can photosynthesize and do everything they need to do. Um, but most importantly, the fruits are gonna have the airflow they need. Yeah, I'll just, I'll finish this up. I'll show you guys one more time and then I think that'll be it. All right, all all done right now um there's a lot of visible ground now underneath which is exactly what we want have some weeding to do obviously and some mulching that will be very important um give them like a nice compost feed and then mulch over and then um you know like i said i think brian needs to pick my way back through here come in and now that we can really see, because everything has been pruned the way it should have been all this time, I think he can address the structure a little bit more efficiently than he had before. This was sort of like stopgap measure, right? We went, we had all those plumbing issues, so we didn't get into a garden 
into the garden for like a full week which at this stage in the summer was just like everything decided to just blossom and grow in that week um and then we left to go camping and I, it was really a week and a half and by the time we got home the tomatoes had just shut up i think i even see it say it like in our in our garden walk before camping I'm like well those should have been pruned right those need structure at this point there's nothing i can do about it so um you know we had to wait until we got home and it'll be fine. I mean, I don't know that this will be... Obviously, the better you prune, the better you structure, the healthier the plant, the better your yields are going to be. But we have we have a lot of tomatoes in the greenhouse still. Um, and, you know, we are serious about homesteading. Like, I will be picking and canning all of these. I want as much as I can. But we also do this as self-care and for fun and you know if if it's not like the best year for tomatoes it's okay you know often in life things do not go according to plan right and so then we just have to make the best of it um nothing ever needs to be perfect i think it just needs to be what you can do within that time frame and within that situation and whatever is going on in your life so um you know it's okay <laughs> it's okay if your tomatoes look like mine and they're crooked or if you didn't prune them it's it's okay you're still gonna get fruit it's still gonna be a, a good year and the garden is still a magical place you know even if it's not exactly what you had planned up here I'm pleased with the progress we made today and um, I'll check back in with you guys here shortly we'll do another probably morning garden walk video we'll probably do another gardening video before we pack up to go camping um, but that's going to be it for today. So thank you for tuning in. I hope the tomato pruning was helpful. And as always, comment, like, subscribe, whatever. It's great to see you guys. See you next time. Bye.